Hello and welcome back to my channel and if you're new, hi, my name is Maria and I'm going to talk about books. I'm going to show you everything that I have read in January, which is only three books, it's not a lot, but um, yeah, it was still a nice reading month. And I was also reading, of course, all the books, but they are still not finished. Um, so I will talk about those two. Uh, at the end of the video, I just will mention what I'm currently reading. But I will start out with the first book that I had finished this uh, January, which is The Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. This is the third book that I've read from Shirley Jackson. And this is a short story compilation, so on a short story anthology. Um, and the most famous short story from Shirley Jackson, The Lottery, is in here. So um, I expected different kind of stories from her because I've read The Haunting of Hill House and We Have Always Lived in the Castle, which is more um, gothic horror, uh, like this dark irony. <laughs> and also uh, unreliable characters, a lot of like magical realism as well and just more dark and spooky uh, and this is different so I did really enjoy it I um, I enjoyed almost all the stories the last one is the lottery itself which is really good uh, it's one of the most famous stories I think in the uh, I read somewhere that was the most famous story of the American history of contemporary short stories but uh, yeah I really like the lottery However, there are also other stories that are good. They're not like your typical horror stories. They're, they're more like this criticism on the society. This book was written in, uh, let me check, in 1949. So I think the, it's more like the 40s, the 50s, uh, that kind of society time. And it's from a perspective of like um, female characters. So most of the main characters are female. They're mid 30s um, and uh, I think from middle class most of the stories contain this kind of characters you read through characters that are not always like very good people it's not so obvious so it's more like the little things that they're doing towards other people or that the little things that other people do to them that show the hypocrisy or like the uh, the subtle racism is also in here sometimes not even subtle it's um it's more like people interact with each other and it's a, like this slice of life some stories don't even feel finished you just uh read out of sudden a uh, day in someone's life and how she interacts with, like with her neighbor or with her co-workers and these interactions are showing you how she uh what kind of person she is and how she thinks about other people so there's a lot of like this middle class looking down on the lower classes um, and <laughs> looking up at rich people. There's also um, people that don't fit into the society because they are not acting like society wants them to act. So there's one story where the main character is like this rich uh, woman that lives with her uh, family-in-law and uh, like her mother-in-law <laughs> and she really hates that she has to live there but she is of course rich because of it and even though she doesn't like her life and she wanted more freedom she wanted to live more for herself she's still like uh proud that she's uh, wealthy and um in her like neighborhood there's this house that is very small it's like, like there's this cabin uh but it's very cute very small and she would love to to live there it's like her dream but of course she cannot do that because she's living in this big mansion and uh this house was empty for a while but now a single mother with her child is moving into the house and she's like very interested uh so she goes there to introduce herself and she becomes friends with this woman uh but eventually uh she starts to bully this woman <laughs> like actually be ignoring her and just uh, gossiping about her because this woman accepts help from uh, another neighbor who is an african-american and this is an issue uh, for her because the whole society doesn't accept it and uh, because he's also a single father as i understand and of course because of his color and th that just doesn't sit well with this wealthy uh, neighborhood <laughs> and uh, it just it starts out very small like she just mentions like oh should you let him work for you well, how nice 
and then it uh, she starts ignoring her she starts gossiping and eventually she's even mad at her because uh, this neighbor doesn't or this uh, single mother doesn't understand what she did wrong and she didn't of course do anything wrong so i thought it was a very thought-provoking uh, story about this woman that uh, thinks that she's like high class wealthy and well educated or well mannered but actually she she's just acting like a horrible person and she gossips and she's not nice and of course she's a racist but she thinks that she's doing the right thing and so there are other characters in uh, this compilation that just try to act um, like they like they are good people but uh, they do things that of course obviously good people wouldn't do uh, however they don't want to admit it and the lottery is also this kind of story but the lottery has more like horror elements um, because at the end yeah, <laughs> there is a horror element I'm not going to spoil it uh, but it start also starts out with this community that is very tight that everyone knows each other and they are acting like nice and uh, supporting in the beginning but then towards the end they do horrible things to each other and uh, they think that's normal and yeah that, that makes the story of course interesting uh, it's just how people interact with each other and how society works especially how women are perceived but also how women can be in these stories um, hypocrite themselves or manipulating or um, hostile towards older women <laughs> So that's, um, yeah, I think that's a very interesting compilation of stor short stories that lets you think about the society and how people act. So one of my favorite stories in here was The Demon Lover, which is about a woman that uh, is waiting for her uh, lover <laughs> and she thinks that they are going to marry, uh, but she's like waiting and he doesn't show up. So she's talking about how she's waiting for him and how she's excited and you just read her thoughts about it and then um, she starts to freak out because he's not there still and she goes looking for him so it's about someone who got uh, the promise of getting married but eventually uh, doesn't really get what she wants uh, so I thought that was a very interesting one but there was also the renegade which was a good story and after you my dear Alphonse I thought that one was also quite interesting because it was about the children and how children uh, can be not only racist but also very violent themselves because they imitate their parents and I thought their uh, conversations the dialogue between the children was very disturbing so uh, that, that story also did stand out to me so it's not like horror stories it's more a criticism on the society and just stories that have this dark vibes to them without being scary it's just like they're an uneasy they, they show the bad side of people right and it's about human condition and how humans can make each other's life difficult without a good reason actually so i enjoy this compilation a lot and i think shirley jackson's writing is really good she just can uh, with words she can paint the atmosphere and like this um this feeling of this uh, small town and uh, like this claustrophobic feeling that you cannot escape your neighbors and uh, the criticism and the gossip and I think it's really good uh, in doing that. Next book, I don't have a physical copy of it um, but it's The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa and it's a piece of Japanese literature and unfortunately I really wanted to like this one uh, because it sounded so interesting because it's a uh, dystopian uh, novel and I like dystopian themes but uh, it just wasn't for me however um, I think a lot of people love this book so it's only my opinion but the memory police it's about this unnamed island we don't know where this island is it's probably not in Japan it's somewhere but it could be anywhere but there are like these clues that I think it wouldn't be in Japan but on this island there's this regime that makes things disappear from the island and it could be anything, uh, so anything on that island can disappear. So we start out like with the disappearance of the fairies, uh, like the, the fairy boat, <laughs> not the fairies in the other sense. And also some food articles will disappear. So people also don't eat properly because some food products just disappeared from the island. And it's not just that they are not there anymore, that they disappeared, but they are still somewhere else. Uh, they could be, but the people don't know it because their memory is also wiped. So when something disappears, uh, when there's just like this wiping of a product or an object, 
people start to forget how to use this object uh, all the memories that they had with this object is also disappearing and also uh, they just eventually don't remember that it was a thing um, so <laughs> that's quite interesting so the people's brain is altered with, with every disappearance and uh, there are all the people that are immune to this, so they still remember everything, but they have to hide, of course, for the memory police, because the memory police wants to wipe out everything. Uh, that is considered uh, illegal. It, and it's considered illegal to have things and to remember things that are wiped out, so they are haunting these people that still remember. And um, the island is like somewhere in, I think, in the ocean <laughs> and people cannot escape because there are also no more boats, there are no more ferries, uh, there is no other transportation to get off the island. And everyone has this feeling that someday everything will disappear and they uh, stop existing or they wouldn't know that they exist anymore. So that's like uh, everyone knows that or at least the main character knows it and she talks about it sometimes. But she's very passive about it. So I think that's the thing that I didn't like. Uh, the Yoko Ogawa's writing style is really good. Of course, I've read it in uh, not in the original uh, Japanese language. So I read the Dutch translation for the of the book. And maybe uh, I, li I didn't like it because of the, of the translation. But I don't think so. I think it's because the characters are very passive. And I do enjoy having good characters. <laughs> I think that's the most important part of a novel. Uh, it's not the storyline for me, it's the characters. And if you have a, like, a very simple, boring storyline, but you have really good characters that are interesting, that uh, you feel like connected to, then even the boring storyline will be interesting. But here it was the other way around. The storyline is good. It sounds like a really interesting theme. Uh, we have like a dystopian setting. Uh, there is this memory police that is haunting people. Things disappear. But the characters are very passive and boring and uh, we don't i think we don't even know their names i i can't remember them the main character doesn't really introduce herself um she has this person that uh, is a friend of her and uh he is one of those people that can remember things so she uh, helps him hide and there is this old man that is just called old man that she also uh, befriends and so with uh, together they try to help each other out but they are, are they are very passive and there is no um demonstrations going on no one really opposes like this regime everyone is like acting like nothing happens so when there's this wiping of an object the next day everything uh, is back to normal only without that object of course so uh, the characters are very boring in my opinion they do not uh, fight for their freedom and they just accept the oppression and I, I didn't like that however I think that's the intention of this book to show how limiting the resources are that people have to go against the regime and how this oppression made them silent and depressed and scared um, but yeah that's that was something that I didn't like reading and also I just I was like dreading to read this book every time so I read it for a very long time uh, and the reason that I gave it three stars eventually was because the ending was quite strong and I do still want to read more from Yoko Gawa and I think maybe I would like other books more and I know this is a very well loved book so this is just my opinion uh, it's not the writing style that is bad or the storyline I think it's pretty good it's just I didn't like the characters and uh, that's an important part for me also the funny thing was that uh, the main character is a writer herself so she the whole time she writes this novel uh, also about oppression <laughs> and we read some of the parts of that novel uh, in the book and I like the novel better that she was writing as the main character then I liked her own story in the book. <laughs> there the character was also very passive but differently. She at least tried to express how she wanted to escape the oppression but she couldn't eventually. Uh, but yeah she at least expressed her negativity towards this oppression and the main character uh, didn't actually do that. So that was the memory for this for me. And then it's time for the last book that I've read in January which is 
The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. It's a piece of uh, contemporary Argentinian uh, literature and this is also a compilation of short stories. So it's not very long, so the short stories are short. Some of them are just a couple of pages and I was really excited to start reading this one because I heard a lot of good things about it. Some people compare it to Stephen King. Others say that's a new original writer um, in contemporary horror fiction. So obviously I wanted to read it because I want to read all compilations of uh, short horror stories. I like short horror stories. And um, when I started out, this is uh, translated from Spanish by the way. Um, so yeah, it's also a translation. And uh, when I started out with the first story, I <laughs> I was a little bit disappointed because it was very like your typical horror story. It was something that I could have read on Reddit actually. Um, it just didn't have anything special to me. Uh, just like this scary element with a little bit of irony. Um, and then the second story was a little bit better but still not really good. It had some shocking factors like uh, explicit dialogues about some sexuality and it was about teenagers uh, and how uh, <clears throat> they didn't like one of their friends but it was also like their typical horror story so I didn't like that one uh, but then it started getting better and better so towards the end I was like really impressed by her writing and one of my favorites were The Well uh, it was about uh, this um, young girl I think like a uh, young adult that was scared for everything and she had like this different phobias she couldn't function in society she couldn't go outside she couldn't uh study she had to drop everything and her life got worse and worse with the day and her family was very outgoing and fun and uh her sister had all of this luck in the in the world she could there to do everything that she wanted but the thing is that when she was little it was the other way around so when she was a child she was the one that was good at everything and that wasn't scared of anything that uh, did what she wanted and her family had phobias for everything so uh something went wrong <laughs> and she was like figuring out what was the thing and she tried to like look back at the past and then her sister mentioned what might be the problem and yeah that's what the story is about and it has this dark twist of course towards the end so i enjoyed that one and one of my other favorites was where are you dear heart uh which is on page 89 87 um and <laughs> this one was very different and i think very original i have never read anything like it i was very surprised to read that uh, the main character of the story was uh mentioning jane eyre jane eyre is one of my favorite books of all time i love it <laughs> and uh, it's i think the first time that i'm reading a book that mentions jane eyre or at least that it mentioned more than just saying well the character was reading Jane Eyre. It's like a very big thing in the story. Uh, so this main character, she starts out reading Jane Eyre and she falls in love with the relationship between Jane and her best friend in the boarding school, uh, Helen. And it's not because of their, their friendship or anything. It's about um, the fact that Helen had tuberculosis. So that's very weird, right? <laughs> so she uh, falls in love with the fact that Jane is friends with someone who has tuberculosis and that Jane cares for her, of course. And um, she's kind of jealous. The main character is jealous about the fact that, um, yeah, about that relationship. It's, it's very weird to explain. So eventually she has this obsession with people in, in novels that have diseases, especially like these Victorian novels, they all have a character that has tuberculosis or another disease that is not mentioned, but the character is suffering of. Uh, so she starts reading all those kinds of books, but eventually that doesn't work for her anymore. She tries to find something more extreme and she starts reading medical books. Then she starts, I don't know, uh, watching documentaries about people that are sick and especially lung and heart diseases are very uh, like <laughs> exciting to her um so you read this person that obviously has a mental problem and uh, an obsession with something um and eventually a sexual perversion of course and it gets to these extremes and eventually she finds someone with a heart disease and yeah it's 
it's getting weirder and weirder towards the end. But I had never read something like this before, so I think it's first original. And second, I thought it was a very interesting twist on Jane Eyre and uh, a different way of seeing Jane Eyre because I I always liked Jane's um, time in the boarding school. So the part in the book about her childhood and about how she came to the boarding school and uh, uh, how she met Helen, of course. And I did like their friendship a lot, but I have never uh, seen it in this light. Um, and the story brings Jane Eyre like in a very different context. So that was interesting. Um, all the stories were a lot about, more mostly about ghosts and superstition. Uh, so that was also interesting, but I think these two stories, The Well and the one about Jane Eyre, was <laughs> one of my favorites to read, um, even though they were weird, especially the second one. Uh, there was another one about the children of Buenos Aires, so the children that are living on the streets, and it also has like this supernatural twist to it, but a lot about crimes, about um, violence and sexuality and sexual perf perversion. So that, that those are the themes mostly in this um, in this compilation. But I did like it, it was original. I wouldn't compare it to Stephen King. Uh, I think this stands on its own, this way of writing. I think Stephen King deals, uh, especially like the, <laughs> the past Stephen King, um, like his earlier work, dealt a lot with, um, in my opinion, racism and um, violence, but then like, between families so it, like the, at home violence um and mostly towards children and women uh but this deals more between violence between like teenagers and friends and i wouldn't compare it to any other writer that i have read so far i think it's also very different from shirley jackson obviously but i did enjoy it and i would like to read other works from mariana enriquez so I would recommend this one. And that's the thing that I love about short stories. Even though you, maybe you don't like a couple of stories, there's a lot of other stories to like. So most of the time you have like eight to 10 or more stories. So it's not that you, uh, you don't like the whole book. Uh, you just maybe don't like a couple of stories. Then the books that I'm currently reading, uh, I just started reading Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Uh, obviously this is a uh, like a Yola Dale children's story, I think I would say children's story. I bought this one to read together eventually uh, with my daughter, but for now I'm reading it myself because I was very interested. And as a child, I love to read like horror and spooky books, and Coraline is, of course, uh, something like that. It's about this girl, Coraline, which is uh interesting name because you want to say Caroline, but it's Coraline. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she moves to a new house with her family and her parents are working the whole time and don't really have attention to her and uh, cannot play with her. So she starts to explore the house and the surroundings and eventually she finds this door that leads to uh, like, an, <laughs> like the same house that she lives in, but only um, you could say parallel universe. So it's exactly the same but different. And uh, her parents are also there, but they are not her parents, obviously. Uh, so she starts to ex explore that world. And yeah, it's quite interesting. But uh, yeah, I think for a child, it could be quite scary as well. <laughs> and it, it also contains illustrations by Chris Gedel. So um, yeah, it's... I would have enjoyed this book when I was a child. Uh, and so far it's just fun to read. Then I also started reading A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. So far I really like this one. Uh, the writing style of Hemingway is um, poetic and uh, full of like energy and uh, it's funny and um, yeah I, I really enjoy the main character in here. Uh, how he interacts with all the characters so far. I'm not that far in. I wanted to read this one in January and finish it in January, but uh, obviously I didn't succeed. So I will read it further in February, um, but yeah, <laughs> I really like it. And it's about the First World War, so um, I've never read a book about the First World War. So yeah, that's something <laughs> new for me. And it's about this young man that 
um, lives in Italy, but he's an American. And the war just breaks out, I think, and he uh, volunteers to be um, a medic at the ambulances. And uh, yeah, he just works there and helps out, of course. And they, the set is in Austria. So he's in service of the it Italian army, Italian army. And also he's in love uh, with one of the nurses there. So very interesting. Uh, it's just his view on the daily life of war and of interacting with this uh, girl that he likes um, and also with other friends that he has in the army and yeah I just I really like Hemingway's writing style and I hope to finish this book soon and just know how it uh, ends. <laughs> then I'm also reading a uh, non-fiction which is Spillover by David Quammen. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I just started a week ago so I'm not that far in it's about zoonotic diseases so diseases that humans can get from animals um, like of course <laughs> the pandemic that we just had but also like a lot of other diseases like dengue yellow fever uh, malaria so it discusses a lot of diseases and for me it's interesting because I'm studying infectious diseases uh, so I do know quite a little bit about it but it's still uh, mentions diseases that I have never heard before and his writing style makes you feel like you're reading really a thriller about these infectious diseases uh, that are haunting the animals <laughs> and uh, the human species, of course. Um, so that makes it very interesting. And he just explains some of the diseases, how we uh, came to know them, how we discovered them, so the history, and <clears throat> how we deal with them, and about the work of um, bio biologists, and just like field biologists but also the lab laboratory work so i really enjoy it uh it's it's really good <laughs> and of course he explores the possibilities of the next pandemic and um this book is was written in 2012 or it was published in 2012 so it's before the you know <laughs> the corona pandemic um so that's uh, sometimes it's a little bit weird to read that he talks about the next pandemic that could happen and yeah we just Live through one. I think you don't really need uh, knowledge of infectious diseases to enjoy reading it. Uh, it's, uh, it explains a lot and it doesn't explain too much so it, that it gets boring if you do have the knowledge. Uh, but it also it's not too difficult to read if you don't know I think anything about infectious diseases. So uh, yeah I will mention this book more when I finish it but for now I'm still reading it. And then the last one which was one of my goals to read in February is of course House of Leaves. I just started it and I enjoy it from the first page. It's so good. Um, the first time when I was reading it, the first 100 pages were very fake to me. And I was like still figuring out how the book works and uh, what I was reading, who the main character was. Uh, and there are more <laughs> multiple main characters in here, uh, which makes the book complex and like difficult to understand. Uh, but now that I have read it and I'm rereading it, I do enjoy like the first 100 pages more, I think. Uh, I'm at the introduction where we have one of our main characters that explains how he has found the manuscript of the House of Leaves. Uh, and I do understand now more what he's talking about and also I'm like focusing more on the details of the story. Yeah, I'm also... <clears throat> marking things that I like in a different color that I have marked before uh, so yeah I'm still discovering new things that I enjoy reading in here and um, I hope I will finish it in February one month but maybe it will take a little bit longer but yeah an in-depth uh, review of this book is coming up when I'm finished and if, still if you want to read along you can uh, we can discuss it together later on but I would recommend this book to anyone. It's so it's so good. So reading it for a second time would be even a better experience. So this was everything for now. Um, all the books that I have read in January and the things that I'm currently reading so far. So my goal for February is to finish all of these books, which is a lot. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was not too chaotic. Uh, I hadn't planned it or scripted it, so it's uh, it's all over the place, I think. But I still hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time with more books. Goodbye.